today's video is going to be talking about suicide. I could go a lot of different ways talking about this topic, and I'm not going to have time to do all of that. There's a lot of stigma and shame and deep sadness that goes with suicide. Yet on the other hand, you know, we hear things like, oh, I could just kill myself all the time. And so there's like almost a, a normalization to it. But I guarantee that most people know somebody in some degree of relation that has thought about suicide or committed suicide. So the video's purpose today is to just talk a little bit about what it actually is and what specifically the Catholic Church's teachings are on suicide. My next video will be, what does a therapist do when encountering suicidal clients? And what you can do if you know a loved one or a friend or somebody of relation is experiencing suicidal thoughts. So stay tuned for that video. But today, let's just talk about what this actually is. talk about suicide, it lies on a spectrum. I could see, for example, five people in a day and they could all express suicidal thoughts in different ways. Similar to, you know, mental health issues lying on a spectrum. You know, I might have kind of a little anxiety about this specific situation or I could have generalized anxiety that affects me every single day and every single moment. It, it lies on a spectrum. Suicide is the same way. So let me give you an example. I could see somebody that has a history, a chronic history of depression and a symptom of depression could be suicidal thoughts. So this person might, you know, just kind of experience hopelessness and not getting better, not feeling like their depression is being alleviated. And so they might have suicidal thoughts and just want to die. I could have a mom in, you know, suffering from postpartum depression. And she might be having intrusive thoughts of hurting herself because it's overwhelming and the, you know, the different hormones in her body are affecting her. You know, I could have a teenager that just experienced a huge level of embarrassment while at school and they might be thinking of self-harm. You know, maybe this is a way to kind of alleviate some of the tension in my body. You know, is that, is that kind of indicative of suicidal thoughts or behaviors? Could be. I could have a, you know, somebody suffering from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, that has flashbacks of some horrible trauma and they just can't escape it. And so they they unconsciously, you know, pull pull the trigger. You know, I could have somebody that's experiencing mania, you know, as part of bipolar disorder, and they're kind of so impulsive in that mania, you know, that they they do something to hurt themselves. So you, you get the idea, you know, every single person that comes into counseling saying I'm suicidal or I have suicidal thoughts is not going to look the same. And so my next video, like I said, will be kind of like, okay, how do therapists work through that? How do you work through that if you come across it in your day to day life? But for now, just know that it lies on a spectrum. However, it lies on a spectrum of kind of the severity of the thoughts but it always is incorporated into some sort of mental illness. Suicidal thoughts rarely pop out of nowhere. You know, there's usually a causation to it. You, there's usually a reason. And I think this confuses people because people that have heard of or know somebody that has completed suicide say, I just don't understand. You know, this person had X, fill in the blank. You know, this person had a great job. This person had the perfect marriage. This person was only nine years old. This person was getting help. You know, like just kind of these, these doubts, these confusions, this, where does that come from? And I think it's confusing because suicide, like somebody asked me one time, like are suicidal thoughts common? And I said, since they lie on a spectrum, I think the answer is yes. I think, you know, it's kind of similar to when you're driving down the highway and there's an accident on the side of the road. 
you know, and you kind of have a thought, gosh, like that's terrible. I hope they're okay. Gosh, what if I was, you know, five seconds earlier and I was the one in the crash? You know, we when we hear of other people experiencing things like suicidal thoughts, you know, sometimes it, it just becomes like an internal conversation. Like, hmm, how does a person get there? You know, would I ever think about that? Like, would I actually ever do that? You know, and it, be, it just becomes kind of this, I don't know, this reciprocal kind of debate that we have with ourselves in a weird way. But my answer, you know, to is it is it common? I think it is. That does not make it normal. So again, there's usually a mental health, you know, illness or diagnosis that's underlying kind of having those suicidal thoughts. Again, they rarely just come out of, you know, absolutely nowhere. However, these thoughts are very, very, very internal. And that's why we are often surprised when somebody completes suicide. Because we're, again, we fill in the blank. Oh, but they were so happy. Oh, they were so popular. Oh, they had a great job. You know, whatever the case may be. But we have to realize that since it's so internal and since there is such such stigma and shame to having those thoughts, most people don't tell anybody. I think one huge blessing of the new generation is that it's actually talked about more. And I mean, I have referrals that come to me saying, you know, I, I told a friend on social media and they told, you know, my parents or they called the police, you know, and that got me here, you know, and I think more kids are talking about it and destigmatizing it in a way, which I mean, thank God for, right? But again, like most of the time it's very internal, which is scary because, you know, we have to, we have to fight the stigma of having these thoughts in order for people to get help. So let's talk about the faith's teachings on this. So again, these this is not my opinion. This is coming from the, the Catechism of the Catholic Church. So if you want to read yourself, um, I don't have this memorized, so I'm going to read it. Um, but it's, you know, 2280 to 2283. So this says, suicide contradicts the natural in- inclination of the human being to preserve and perpetuate his life. It is gravely contrary to the just love of self. It likewise offends love of neighbor because it unjustly breaks the ties of solidarity with family, nation, and other societies to which we continue to have obligations. Suicide is contrary to love for the living God. I, I've had people, you know, in kind of the faith-based setting that I work in, you know, I've had people say, I feel such like faith-based or religious shame or guilt for having suicidal thoughts. And I think what I just read is why, you know, it's it's not natural to think of suicide. It doesn't feel good. You know, it's not something that we would wish upon anybody or that we desire to have. You know, we, we just want to be protected by God from those thoughts, right? But kind of the next chapter, 2282, it says, Grave psychological disturbances, anguish, or grave fear of hardship, suffering, or torture can diminish the responsibility of the one committing suicide. Then it goes on to say, 2283, we should not despair of the eternal salvation of persons who have taken their own lives. By ways known to him alone, God can provide the opportunity for solitary repentance. The church prays for persons who have taken their own lives. I don't know about you, but I find such relief in this last part, especially. God is merciful. You know, we believe that to be true. And God is capable of anything, including forgiveness. You know, so if we if we are in a psychological disturbance, as it calls it, you know, and we complete suicide, we still can believe in God's mercy. This is not an out for committing suicide. I want to be very clear about that, right? This is not a free pass, you know? Well, God's merciful, so he'll save me if I do this. Of course not. But it it provides us a little bit of an explanation of the, the cause and like the state of mind that somebody that is mentally ill is in if they do complete suicide. So again, I try to put just kind of my hope in, you know, the the mercy that God shows us. 
one of my all-time favorite quotes is from uh, St. Pope John Paul II. He says, quote, whoever suffers from mental illness always bears God's image and likeness on himself, as does every human being. And I think it's just, you know, it's, it's just reminding us that the integration of mental health and faith are so prevalent. You know, that even the catechism talks about suicide. It talks about mental illness. It talks about anxiety. It talks about emotional health. You know, it, it covers all of these things because they are real and because they need to be talked about. And because I have a whole nother video about, you know, where does mental illness come from? You can look into that, you know, but I don't believe that, you know, it comes from God. I think God allows it, but it's because of sin and the fall that it really exists. Same thing with suicide. So these are just kind of, you know, some really basic thoughts. Like I said, my next video, I'm going to talk about like, okay, what do we do? You know, how do we approach this? How do therapists and family members or friends, you know, if you encounter somebody that is experiencing suicidal thoughts, what do you do? So stay tuned for that. But I think, again, it's just, let's try to destigmatize this, you know, little by little. And so, you know, please leave me comments with what you think. Share this video, you know, with anybody that, you know, it might help. Um, you know, kind of do some research and educate yourself about suicide. You know, that's the best thing that we can do to destigmatize it and to get more people the help they need if they are experiencing this. Because if we reduce the shame and embarrassment and stigma, then these people might reach out more and actually not complete suicide. So I appreciate your time. Thank you for educating yourself. Thanks for being here. Please follow me on my other platforms. I'm on social media. So, you know, links in kind of the chat below. Um, so be sure to subscribe and be sure to tune in for next week's video. Okay, many blessings.